Hey guys, mixed up. Wiring up a 3 pin plug sounds simple enough, but in critical applications, it is actually non trivial. Yes, just about any common method would work if you are using this plug to power up a laptop or uh, to charge a couple of mobile phones or to operate a television set. But those methods may fail if you were to use the same plug to power up higher power devices such as uh, electric kettles to boil water or if you were operating multiple kettles at the same time or uh, to operate an electric stove or to power up uh, a high power server rack. Those methods may fail on higher power devices and uh, it may actually cause fires and electrical arcing and so on. So today I'm going to show you how to attach wires to the screw terminal of a Singapore or UK 3-pin plug or to any screw terminal for that matter. And if you're even watching this video, I'm going to assume that you already have uh, the basic knowledge of how to wire up a 3-pin plug the usual way and which colour lead you know, goes to which terminal. So in this video, I will focus solely on the technique of binding a stranded wire like this. These are stranded wires to its screw terminal. So let's get started. Alright guys, I'm going to show you two different methods of doing so. And in the first method, you wouldn't even need special equipment like this crimping tool over here. And this first method is best for the situation where the cross-sectional area of the copper plus its rubber insulation doesn't exceed the size of the hole of the screw terminal. So first, let's go ahead to strip off some external insulation. And for demonstration purpose, I'll just pick the blue lead and I'll strip off some of the blue insulation as well. And now, I'll just twist the strands of wire together. And next, we'll have to flatten the insulation a little bit. So have a look at the profile of the flattened insulation. That's how it looks. And next, I'm going to fold the bundled strands of wire onto one side and pass this wire through the screw terminal. Let me open it up a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to pass, pass it through the screw terminal in such an orientation where the strands of wire are facing away from the screw. So this is how it looks. All the strands of wire on one side coming out a little bit on the, opposite, on the other end of the hole. And with this, you can go ahead to tighten the screw. And the action of tightening, what it does is the screw presses onto one side of the rubber insulation and the entire wire is pressed, compressed downwards and the other flat side where the wires, the strands of wire are will be pushed onto that bottom side of the hole. So this maximizes the contact area between the strands of copper wire and the metal hole the internal surface of the hole, that is. So that's how it's done. This is the first method without crimping, without any specialized tool. Next, I'm going to show you the second method, but first I'll release the 
this wire from the screw terminal. Right. And the second method is best for the situation where the cross-sectional area of the copper plus its rubber insulation is too large such that you wouldn't be able to pass the wire through the hole of the screw terminal. So what we're going to do here is we'll make use of a ferrule and these, these things are also called boot laces. So first, I'll strip off the blue insulation. Oops. I've got to tighten, increase the tension of the screw. Uh, it's not working. Okay, got it. And I'll then pass the ferrule sorry, pass the strands of uh, wire through the ferrule make sure that you get every strand in and not leave any stray strands outside like so don't worry about the excess, we can trim it off later Now, we can crimp the ferrule onto the strands of uh, wire using the wire crimper. It's very simple, just done in a single press like so. So now you can see that the barrel is very firmly attached to the bundle of strands of wire. It wouldn't come off even if I were to tug on it. Now we can go ahead to trim off the excess. that done, we will pass the ferrule through the screw terminal and we want to make sure that, uh, that this ferrule now has a square profile, cross-sectional profile and we want to make sure that um, one of the flat sides is directly facing the screw here. And this would ensure that uh, the electrical contact area is maximized. I'll go ahead to tighten up the screw. Now we are done. And it's the final product. So this is the second method. Both methods work equally well, but uh, best for different situations. I hope you have enjoyed my video and you have learned something today. Thank you for watching.